Hey, yeah, uh, SRP Landscape Design here with another quick lighting setup tutorial. Today we have a Scandinavian style house here, and uh, as you can see, I've already preset uh, the scene uh, for us. Uh, so let's go ahead and start setting up some uh, lights. Before I do that, I need to turn the emissiveness of this spotlight on. So we go to material, uh, we find the settings and move the emissive uh, tab or slider up somewhere around here. You can see uh, the difference. It'll be more visible when we go back to our uh, scene. There it is, as you can see. So uh, let's start by um, turning on our first uh, layer of uh, lights. We need to go to objects, mode and turn on uh, this layer where I have these two spotlights. So uh, this particular spotlight, as you can see, here is the shape. It is very uh, wide angle spotlight. Now here is the temperature or color of uh, the light. So I want all these lights on the outside to be warm. That's why I chose uh, the color. Here is the brightness that I already uh, preset after a couple of uh, test renders. And as you can see, I'm aiming uh, this particular light slightly uh, towards this wall, so I don't get uh, sharp shadows on, on this ledge in here. Let's check the other spotlight that we have for this uh, pendant light in here. Uh, it is a little different uh, shape, as you can see. It is a little narrower, somewhere uh, medium size uh, spotlight. The brightness is a little uh, higher since the light is a little lower and I want uh, the light to cast shadows from these objects, the, those chairs and the table on the ground. You can see it uh, slightly in here, even through the daylight. Uh, so the brightness is a little higher. The temperature is uh, exactly the same as the previous spotlight and here is the cone angle. So when I go back to the photo mode, to our uh, scene preset or setup, and I press F8 key on the keyboard, you can preview the shadows as well. So here you have, uh, this wall is nicely uh, and evenly lit. And here we have, uh, from this spotlight, we have nice and strong shadows from the chairs and the table on the porch. Moving on to our next layer of lights. I'm gonna turn them on. It is these uh, line lights down here, these ghost lights on the, the ledge of the porch. Here you can see the shape of the light. It is a line light and here is the brightness. The value is quite high uh, because the fall of a slider is quite uh, uh, high as well. So you need to find a fine balance in between the brightness and the fall of, of the light. Because this light, as I always mention, uh, does not cast shadows first and does penetrate or goes through the materials in your model so you have to be extra careful but in this case it is just aimed at the ground so we do not have uh, we shouldn't have any problems from some reflections or coming through the materials but still here is the brightness value uh, and the fall off when we go back to our preview photo mode select our scene now you can see uh, the line light in here uh, the value looks uh, pretty pretty high but actually when you render it will change uh, slightly when I press F8 button now you, you cannot see any difference in here as I mentioned these lights do not cast shadows so there is no uh, change at all only uh, those spotlights that I showed you previously they cast shadows so let's move on to our next uh, layer of uh, lights Got to switch on another one you can see them straight away in here these are the spotlights as well from these uh, uh, floor uh, lights that you can see in here aimed at the wall. So when I select one of them, we can check the, the values and uh, the shape. It is a very narrow uh, beam uh, spotlight. The temperature exactly the same as the previous spotlight. Now I brought up the brightness uh, somewhere in this uh, value, 112. So these are uh, a lot stronger than the other spotlights and uh, the color temperature I already mentioned and the angle cone angle is quite or very, uh, very narrow. 
So when we go back to our photo mode for the preview, our scene, pressing F8 once again, we can see the difference. It is very slight, only a little bit or, or a small shadows on the buttons on these walls, but you can see the difference when I press the F8 button. And let's switch on our last layer of lights. That's the lights from the interior. There is a lot of them, but I'm not going to go through all of them because those are in a different video. All the interior setup. There is only two lights that I'm using in here, and it's this one. And we have another one exactly the same for the second window as well. As you can see, it is a very wide angle light. The color temperature is white because all these interior lights are white. The cone angle and the brightness is uh, the value is quite uh, strong, uh, and that is uh, because we need some uh, light or strong light coming through those uh, those curtains, and we want the porch to be lit on the outside as well. So that's why the brightness maybe perhaps just a little bit higher like that and when we go to our preview for the mode and the preview uh, scene and I press F8 once again now you can see uh, the difference uh, all the interior is lit but specifically for these two windows those two spotlights are coming through uh, the window and they cast a nice light on the, the front porch you see the, the shadow in between those lights from uh, this wall and that is in between them so that's the setup for the lights. I'm gonna go through the effects real quick so we know how we uh, set it up, this scene. Now the lens flare I'm using specifically for this spotlight. So it will create a little halo uh, effect around the, the source. That means I increase the master brightness and also isolate bright pixels. So, <coughs> excuse me. So the white uh, light will pop from the rest of it and we get the, uh, the effect of the source of light, a little bit of halo around it. Next stop, precipitation. As you can see, the scene is wet, so I'm using the, the rain. That's why the slider is all the way to the uh, left or down here. I uh, disabled all the particles, uh, size and quantity. That means this is a scene just after rain. Uh, you can see it from the puddles, water puddles in here on the porch. And that's, uh, I got them from this precipitation phase when I move it. As you can see, it's all covered. And I move it somewhere around here. I only get kind of a disappearing puddles on the porch. And that's what I want today. So uh, we're done with the precipitation. Real skies, as you can see in here, I used uh, one of the presets from Lumion called Overcast, specifically the clouds in the middle. I did not change any values uh, at all. I left exactly as it was, so that was an easy setup. Uh, now fog, as you can see, this is the value of the density. I'm not going to move it because it's difficult to put it back on. I already test rendered a couple of times. I like it the way it is. So here is the density, uh, the fall off, the distance from uh, the ground, and the fog brightness as well. So we're done with the fog, sky and clouds, it's automatically disabled, as you can see when you use a real skies in Lumion Sun, I left exactly as it was from preset, you can see the height, the heading, but most importantly uh, in the overcast uh, preset, the sun brightness is all the way down. Next stop, sharpen up, so uh, we increase the intensity of the sharpening uh, just a little bit to get a little crisper uh, image. Exposure, now we're using a value somewhere just under uh, half, uh, perhaps just a little bit uh, less, because it is a scene, kind of uh, uh, early evening, uh, overcast shot, so we don't want uh, too much light in our scene. Uh, next stop, color correction. In here, uh, the temperature is, well, basically uh, balanced. Um, we increase the brightness a little bit and then we decrease the contrast. Since we have overcast, so there is a lot of diffuse light, so very, very soft uh, shadows in here. So the contrast goes down and the brightness goes up. Next stop, 
reflections. We have a couple of uh, reflective surfaces in here. Specifically, there is the windows in here and these windows as well. But I selected this uh, porch uh, also because we do have those uh, water puddles, as, uh, if you remember. You cannot see them in here, but they are, they are there. So we want the reflections from those as well because they are just clear water puddles and there'll be nice reflections coming from, from them. So we need to select uh, this surface as well. We're done in here, turning on the speed ray reflections, not to forget. Next up, uh, hyperlight. Well, we don't have to adjust that. Stays the value uh, somewhere in the middle from the preset from Lumion. A skylight we did adjust that one. We brought the brightness up, so we get a little bit of bounce from the terrain or environment uh, in here, and also from uh, the sky, so we get more light on the house. Uh, the saturation can go down just a little bit because the colors in, uh, in the overcast shot are a little subdued, a little dimmed. I'm not gonna uh, turn uh, these uh, reflections on uh, for now and keep it on render normal so it is faster. Next up, shadows. Now the coloring is uh, towards the blue spectrum because I want uh, well the, the sky is kind of uh, kind of grayish or uh, uh, bluish so we don't want it uh, too warm and uh, we increase the brightness just a little bit and the exterior, interior exterior slider is towards the exterior so once, once again it will make the shadow shadows appear a little uh, colder and I move the omni shadow slider down just a little bit from the previous preset so we don't have uh, two sharp uh, lines in these uh, dark uh, areas of the house. Turning on the soft and fine details uh, shadows and we are done with, the, with that effect. Chromatic aberrations always like to bring the dispersion down just a little bit from the original preset. Depth of field, um, I want the foreground out of focus slightly and the background as well. I'm going to select the distance uh, or out of focus a feature. I choose the, the corner of the house or somewhere in the middle. I turn it on and I move the foreground background slider somewhere towards the middle but slightly towards the foreground or closer to the foreground so the foreground is a little more out of focus than the background and also increase the amount of blur somewhere around the first third of, uh, of the amount and you can see the background is slightly out of focus and so is the foreground. So the center of attention is on the house. And those are all the effects. We have all the lights. So let's go ahead and create our final render. You can find interior lighting setup for this house on a Red House design channel. And for the exterior, you have to head to New Millennium design channel. Both of the links are in the description. In the meantime, thanks for tuning in, bye bye!